Hello YouTube, today we're going to be going over some really awesome physics problems. So we might be doing like all the basic ones like, oh, find this vector, here's given information, V1, V2, acceleration, distance, time. But now we're going to actually get to use some applications, some really cool stuff when you're only given a limited information on what you might actually know and see what you can figure out. Um, but here are some of the formulas that you'll um, probably be using in these uh, examples I'm going to describe in a moment. Um, but you have your acceleration, which we'll just call A. Um, and you have your velocity, which is your integral of your acceleration. Um, oops, I forgot to put something here. Um, I'll put that in after I do this. Um, it should be 0 to T. That's most accurate. Um, that's why the T primes are there. But you might know, just see it as the basic integral um, with the plus C. And that plus C would actually be this V naught because um, that would be our constant, that's our initial condition you could say. Then we have our uh, distance which is the integral of a of t plus v naught um, so you get one half a t squared plus v of t plus x or yeah v naught t, you know, okay so also one formula you might want to use is this if you plug in I believe delta at x over delta t in the v um, v naught you would get this formula by deriving it um, so we're just jumping into the examples now, enough of uh, the pre-stuff. Okay, really cool problem. Earthquake. So here's a map of California and the San Andreas fault line. And there's an earthquake that happens. And all you know physics-wise um, are two waves that are emitted when an earthquake happens. A P wave and an S wave. And you don't really need to know what those are exactly. But you do need to know that they start at the same time. When the earthquake happens, both of these waves are emitted. Um, and the difference between the two is that the speed at which the wave travels, or how when it propagates. So um, here we have EQ, is the earthquake, um, and a city nearby, that blue star. And we want to know how far away the earthquake was from the city, or how far the city is away from the earthquake, depending on your uh, perspective. But the velocity of the P wave is 6.5 kilometers a second, and the velocity of the S wave is 3.5 kilometers a second. So you must know which one's faster. The P wave obviously travels faster because it's a greater number. And you know that the uh, change between the two P waves, so the P arrives first, and it takes 33 more seconds for the S wave to catch up to it. So the faster one gets there, it takes 33 seconds, which is quicker than the slower one. So um, now um, we want to use this formula. We know. Uh, time and speed, so we're going to need to know our distance, we want to know how far, so we can simply use distance equals uh, rate times time, or velocity times time, and this is key because there's no acceleration, there is no acceleration of this wave, it just happens, constant speed, um, so that's why this equation is used. Now, we're trying to find the distance, right? Well, both waves travel the same distance in terms of what we're looking for. So we know the distance the P wave travels and the distance that the S wave travels should be the same. And that's what we're looking for, right? So if we set the two equations equal to each other and use the formula V of T, or rate times time is distance, you just do that, set that up there, and plug in the information that we know. So we have 6.5 uh, kilometers a second times the time, um, equals 3.5 kilometers a second. Now, what's different with T of S? So, we know that T, which one's bigger, TP or TS? TP, or excuse me, yeah, T, um, oh, I think I wrote that wrong. That should be a S there for the TS plus 30 seconds. So, TP should be bigger. Um, so, it should be TS plus 33 because the S1 is slower. Um, so, that's why you need to add that 33 seconds to make up the equations equal. Um, and then you simply distribute the 3.5 and solve for the TP, and you get 38.5 seconds. Now, using the original formula that we originally had, distance equals rate times time, velocity times time, um, we have the speed of the P wave, because remember, this is the TP we solved for. And you just use the basic formula to find the distance. And we find that 250.25 kilometers um, is the answer, which is the distance between the earthquake and the city. Does this answer make sense? Yes, I mean, um, for the earthquake to have an impact, that seems a fairly reasonable distance. Um, I mean, it's not like times 10 to the 30th or like something crazy or super small distance, right? Um, so this makes sense. You always want to make sure your answer makes sense. So we'll move on to another problem. This one's really cool. So you're um, on a subway car. You've just gone on. The door's shut. 
your initial speed is zero, and the car or the subway car accelerates at 1.6 meters per second for 14 seconds. So it's gaining speed and it's accelerating. Then it cruises uh, for a constant speed, which means acceleration is zero, and it cruises for 70 seconds. So then you obviously need to come to your stop, and when you do, um, it slows down at negative 3.5 meters per second squared. Um, so the question is how much distance is traveled uh, that the car did. So I, what I did was I broke it up 1, 2, 3 from the information given, um, and I drew a diagram to replicate that information. So um, one thing we're going to do is we can solve for velocity. So for looking at the first part, 1.6 meters per second for 14 seconds, well, how fast was that car going? We simply multiply those two together, and you figure out that 22.4 meters per second is how fast that car was going. Um, which we'll need for the second part. Um, we'll still need still need to solve for the first part, though. Um, we're going to be using that for later, though. So um, just use the second formula here, or the third one, um, because we want to know distance, and distance is represented by x. Um, so using what we have for the first part, we know the initial velocity was 0. Um, so that's why our v1t component is plus 0. So we simply plug in the information that we know, 1 half 1 1.6 times 14 squared, um, plus zero, and that means the distance traveled so far just by accelerating is 156.8 meters. Now, this is where we use the VAT portion, um, but, or not quite yet. Yeah, that's where we need it. Okay, so what was that speed at which that cart was traveling? What was the initial speed after 14 seconds has gone and that car has accelerated um, and traveled 156.8 meters? What was the speed at which it was going? Well, that's where you figure it out, uh, that speed there, so that's where we plug in the initial speed. Um, and you multiply it by how how fast, excuse me, how long it was traveling for, and that was 70 seconds. So you get that distance as well by multiplying those two together, and you get 1568 meters, um, or 1568. And then you need to use this formula here. Um, that was that last one stated here. I just meant xf minus xi is delta x. Um, same thing. So now we need to find. Um, the delta x. We're still looking for position. Um, so we plug in the information we know. 22.4 meters, uh, or it's not meters actually. I think it's kilometers. No, it's meters um, per second. Square that acceleration. We are decelerating, um, or slowing down, I should say, um, because, yeah, going opposite directions, velocity and acceleration. And um, then you multiply that, and you solve for x. Um, and that delta x is your x3, which is 71.68 meters. Now, all you got to do is find total distance traveled. You add all those up, everything pretty much in green on the bottom there. Um, and you get one f those numbers added up, and you should get 1796.98 meters. Um, so that is how far the cart traveled. Now, does this make sense? Yes, distance-wise it makes sense, but let's look at each component. So you're accelerating 1.6 meters per second squared for 14 seconds. That makes sense. It's a slow acceleration. You have constant speed. You're cruising. But check out the stop, though. It kind of seems a little too steep. A lot of Gs you would experience um, by stopping that fast. That's, you know, about a third the fast as, um, or a little over that, um, as, you know, gravity 9.8 meters per second squared, so this that would be a very unrealistic stop, uh, probably take you about like four seconds, I believe, if you were to stop at that acceleration, <laughs> uh, or deceleration, uh, so that one's kind of impractical, but, um, you know, just kind of playing around with the numbers and see if they make sense is always a good thing to do after you do all the math. So, now this is a super tough problem. Um, if you were able to get that second one, good for you. That was a kind of a tough one, too. The first one was pretty good, too. But this is a really, really complicated one. If you really think you got it down, I would try this, pause it, do the best you can to figure it out. It's, qu it's quite a tough one. Let me give you the scenario, though. So, you only have seen the last third of the total height from this object has fall. So, if I drop this object... Um, you weren't looking when you dropped it, you weren't measuring or anything, but then you turned and looked and you just saw the last third of the fall. What was the total height the object had fallen? Well, you're given um, the time that you saw was 1.3 seconds that elapsed, and you know that it was initially dropped at a velocity of zero, nothing, it was just dropped. Um, so what is that height? So here's a hint now for those of you who want to try it before I go move on. You're going to need to use the quadratic formula. 
Um, so pause that, see if you can figure it out. This is a tough one. Okay, you'll start with using this formula um, to find distance, because that's what we're looking for. Distance will be represented by height. But since we're, let's use what we have. Well, our height that we know is h over 3, a third of the height. Um, and we also know that gravity is negative 9.8 which is the acceleration, and we know the change in time is 1.3 seconds. So given that information, but what are we still missing? We're missing the velocity component. What was that initial velocity when we immediately saw um, and turned and looked? How fast was it traveling before we saw the initial change? So that's what we're looking for, that initial velocity. So we have to use another formula to use that, in which we used previously um, that derived formula that we figured out earlier. And we're going to also plug in the information that we know as well. So we're going to look for that final velocity, which will be our v naught in the answer here. Um, we know initially it was traveling at 0. Um, gravity is 9.8, but we'll just leave it as g for now, negative 9.8. Um, and we know this part is a bit intuitive, so let me go back here. Um, the change in distance. What was the change in distance? If we saw a third of the height falling, that means previously we two-thirds of it has already traveled. So make sure that you have that two-thirds was traveled already at that point. Remember, we're going kind of where that horizontal dashed line is. That's kind of what we're doing all the math right now. We're figuring out where that initial velocity was. Well, not initial velocity. That velocity, but initial velocity we saw right before um, it continued to fall. So then you pretty much uh, take the square root to solve for the final velocity, which is going to represent our v-naught in the equation that we're going to plug in over here. So do the same thing, plug in those values. But to make the math easier, let's multiply everything by 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, and we can get rid of all the fractions. And if you do that, you get 2h equals 3gt squared plus 12t radical gh over 3. So let's keep moving on that to solve it a little easier. Let's get rid of that square root. So we're going to square both sides. If you do that, you get this long math equation here. Um, so now... And you're wondering, wow, I didn't really think I needed to use a quadratic formula. Well, it's coming up soon. Don't worry. Get all the sides on and combine like terms and get zero on the other. And then you do that down the bottom left corner. Did that for you. And then you would use the quadratic formula and plug everything in. Um, so once you do all that, you'll get your answer, which is about 240 meters, depending on how you plug in the numbers. Um, but, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of thinking, too. So... That, that was a tough one. It took me quite a while to get that. I didn't get this on my first try. Don't worry about it. It's a really tough problem. But if you did manage to get that, it's very impressive. If you really know what you're doing, um, the hint should have helped um, in some way. So this is some pretty top-notch, like the real deal physics stuff. You might be like, oh, physics is easy. They give you all the information. You just plug it in. Well, this is the actual physics stuff. Like, you only given so much. And what are the conditions that you're doing or how can it be applied? This is the real deal. Um, so I hope this helped you out in terms of application um, and real life problem solving.